Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repair and today we're checking out a 2005 Fender Mexican Fat Strat in Midnight Wine. I picked up this guitar for $250 but it needs some work. So today we're going to go through this and fix it up and get it playing great. Let's go ahead. All right, so I was able to pick this thing up locally for $250. It came with a really nice hard case, which is great. I mean, these hard cases are worth about $100 by themselves. So uh, yeah, I got a really good deal on this guitar. And uh, it does need some work, um, but that's you know a really big benefit of being able to do some of your own work on guitars is you can find things for really great deals that nobody else wants to fix and then uh, after you do the work yourself, you know, you've got a quite a nice guitar. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through this thing, see everything that it needs, fix it up, get it playing great, and then do a review on it after it's all finished. So yeah, this is a 2005 Fender Mexican Fat Strat in Midnight Wine. Uh, the Fat Strats are just called Fat Strats because they got the humbucker pickup in the bridge. And everything on this is stock original, um, but there is some issues with it. So I did test the electronics and all the electronics are working fine. If I plug in an amplifier and test everything, everything works. Um, so no issues with the electronics, which is great. And uh, I, I believe all the electronics are original. We'll check that once we get the pick guard off. But uh, what happened to this thing is someone was I think trying to relic it, uh, either that or a bunch of the finish started to chip off after a, a drop or something and they just kept going. So someone had taken off a bunch of the finish and then looks like they tried to sand it down or cut it down here. And um, these guitars have a really thick poly finish. So there was quite, uh, you know, there is quite a ledge between the finish and the wood. Like it's, it's quite thick. So I think what was happening is is that this was catching and uh, peeling off even further because it would like catch on clothing or you could really feel it catching if it, if you ran your hand across it. So what they did, and you can see this if you catch it in the light, is they put some sort of finish over the bare wood to kind of uh, seal the wood and then act as kind of a smooth barrier between the original finish and the wood. So if you feel this, it looks like someone maybe had sanded around here a bit too. But if you feel this, it's nice and smooth, whether as before, you know, you'd be catching everything on the uh, the ledge for the finish. So it's functional. It doesn't look the greatest. Although from, uh, from a distance, it, it looks okay. It just kind of looks like a relict strat. And uh, yeah, some more of that back there. And I did notice some cracks here by the neck, although these are mostly, these are just finished cracks and they've been sealed with some kind of sealer, whatever they use to coat that bare wood. So I'm not gonna do anything to the body, I'm just gonna leave it as is, cause I don't really mind the relic look. And uh, you know, it's, it's smooth so it's functional the way it is. Uh, I don't really have any issues with that. So this is the neck that I used in my PV uh, T60 video where I swapped the neck out and then when I was using the uh, machine head it sheared right off so I have another replacement mach machine head on here right now but I did pick up a new set of machine heads locking that we're going to swap on this one because uh, it's pretty much impossible to find just a single machine head uh, for sale or if they are they want like ridiculous prices we might as well just replace them all anyway. So I ordered a set of machine heads that I'm going to go ahead and put on there. And uh, there's a little bit of fret wear on here. It needs a little bit of work that way. But overall, this thing should be pretty easy to get up and running the way we want it to. So 
Let's get it on the bench, take some specs, and double check that the electronics are indeed working. All right, so yeah, quick little electronic test. You can also plug in a multimeter to see if the pickups are reading. Um, another way, you could just use a metal object on the pickups just to make sure they're working. So it looks like my bridge volume works. Looks like this is wired up so that the bridge uh, doesn't have a tone, kind of like in the in the back position on most strats, it uh, takes the tone out of the circuit. So, but it does come back in in the fourth position. Yeah, so that's working in the fourth position. Middle should be all three here. And then these two. So yeah, everything appears to be working. So we've got no issues with the electronics, which is great. Uh, I'm still gonna check underneath the pickguard to make sure everything's original. All right, so here's a look at our electronics. So yeah, everything looks stock original. Nothing's really been messed with. Um, you can tell no solder points have been altered. It all looks like the original wiring. It's still got the original tape on here. From the factory we've got our two ceramic single coil pickups and our fender humbucker and it looks like we've got full size cts pots and uh, a fender five-way switch and here's a look at our cavity routes so lots of buffing compound in here which is pretty standard um, this midnight wine finish it looks pretty cool there's a little bit of a sparkle in there as well so it catches the light quite nicely and then we can see we've got our three big uh, routes there for the pickups and uh, on this era of Mexican fenders you can tell it's a Mexican body by these three dots under the pick guard uh, those three holes those are guides for the CNC machine uh, the American bodies only had the one in this era so um, if you pull apart your American guitar, supposedly, and it's got three holes, you know that someone swapped the body on you and that is a Mexican one. Uh, we can also tell it's Mexican with the M on the serial number there. Um, so yeah, everything is looking like it should. All right, here's a look at our neck. So yeah, it's got all the fender factory marks on there, along with some pencil marks there. Factory markings on there, it looks like there's a 2005 in there, but yeah, that everything's looking as it should there. Let's check the, the fit on the neck pocket. So yeah, it's a, it's a decent fit. There's a, a little bit of space in there. Like you can't pick up the guitar with the tension, but it does snap into place. So it's a pretty decent neck fit there. And I noticed there was no shims in the neck pocket. So that's promising. Uh, th this thing did have quite nice action and I briefly checked it and I couldn't notice any buzzing or fretting out anywhere. Um, so uh, you'll see a lot of fenders come from the factory with shims. Um, just to help with the action, but uh, this one didn't need it, so that's a good sign. Uh, the next thing I want to do is replace the machine heads. So like I say, one of these uh, machine heads sheared off and you can't really buy single replacements. So uh, I actually, I'm going to upgrade these machine heads to these uh, locking tuners that I found online. Um, yeah, they seem really like nice quality. They're all metal and they do have the locking portion as well and they're not too heavy. They've also got these two little uh, nubs on the top there. That's how Fender mounts their machine head to the neck. They don't use screw holes. So these are supposed to fit just perfectly on there. So let's take off the old ones and see if that is the case. So yeah, super simple, no alterations needed at all, they basically just dropped right in and uh, tightened them up 
and they feel good. And uh, yeah, a locking tuner is definitely an upgrade for this guitar. The next thing we're gonna do is a little bit of fret work on this guitar. So I used a fret rocker and then I noticed there was a couple high spots on this neck. Uh, there's also some divots from Playwear and uh, they could also use a polish. And so I'm gonna do a full um, fret filing and crowning on this guitar. Uh, it doesn't need much. I'm not gonna take off a lot of material but I just wanna make sure everything is nice and uh, level. And here's the end result. So super level, crowned, and super polished frets. All right, so a quick look at the condition and how our frets look now. So those are our new machine heads, looking good. Truss rod works great on this guitar. And uh, it's got a bone nut. It works good too. It seems to be well cut. And then our frets are nice and Level, super shiny, super polished, they look great. And uh, our fingerboard was nice and protected during the whole process. So no weird stains or divots on the fingerboard. And uh, yeah, the midnight wine finish looks great. There's uh, some scuffing on the finish. And then uh, I was gonna show so yeah, using a microfiber cloth, even when I go over the edges of the poly, um, whoever put that sealer over the bare wood did a decent job because there's nothing catching there too. So you can rub your hand or your arm on there and nothing's going to catch and uh, chip the finish anymore. So that's good. The Relicking doesn't look great, but from a distance it's, it's decent. It's got some nice grain on the wood underneath. And a look at the back. More of the same there. Again, you can rub a cloth or whatever on there and it's not going to catch anything. And there's a couple impact spots here. So I'm wondering if they were trying to crack the finish with like a something to continue cracking it off or I'm not sure. But these are all stable. They just kind of look like impact circles. And yeah, there's a couple little finish cracks near the neck here. And I checked, they don't go down to the wood, but they are, they did crack the finish and it looks like they've sealed it with whatever they sealed the wood with. So they're stable at least. They don't look the greatest, but. And then our neck is in good shape. It's got some, actually some flame in the neck, which is nice. And there's a look at our locking tuners. They seem to be nice, high quality tuners. Easy to turn, and uh, they're all metal. And they feel nice and tight turning them as well. So these are a nice upgrade. A little bit more of that flame in the neck there. So I noticed something in the trim cavity when I was cleaning it, and uh, so I took off the cover, and it looks like someone has blocked off our trim with something. I'm not really sure what that is. Um, so this is common for a lot of strap players. They'll block the trim using like a wooden block or you can actually buy products that um, block the trim and that just pre prevents the trim from being used like a tremolo system um, or a, vib a vibrato system which is technically what it's called but everybody calls it a trim. Anyway, um, so someone has shoved something in there so the trim doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and fish this out and see what it is. So yeah, it came out really easy. It looks like it's just a little piece of metal of some sort. 
with a piece of tape to protect the finish on the back. Uh, so anyway, that's out and uh, we'll set up the guitar with the trim. So this guitar is all good to go and ready for a setup. I do believe I have another knob here that I can use for it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and restring and set up this guitar and then we'll check the setup. All right, managed to get a nice setup on this guitar. So you can see that the truss rod's set nice and tight. There's just a very slight gap between the notch straight edge and the fingerboard. So here we are in the third fret area. When we use the third fret, we can see the strings just resting very gently against the first fret. So that tells us that the neck is straight, the truss rod is tight, and this nut is cut nicely. And we've got nice low action in this area. And then at the 12th fret, using our depth gauge, we can see at the high, or at the low E, the action sitting at between 1.25 and 1.5 millimeters, and at the high E, just above one millimeter. So, nice low action. I'm just gonna go through each fret uh, and see if there's any buzzing or fretting out. I like to speed up this part, but if you wanna hear it in real time, just slow down the player to 25%. So yeah, nice low action and no fretting out or buzzing anywhere. Uh, the fret level turned out really nice on this. Yeah, and the neck feels really good. All right, so let's go ahead and get some specs quickly on this guitar, and then we'll plug it in and see how it sounds. Weighing in at seven pounds, 9.9 .9 ounces. So our humbucker is reading an 8.28, and our middle pickup is a 6.56. And our neck is a 6.59. Width at the nut is uh, 1.65. And at the 12th fret, uh, 2.0. Neck depth at the first fret is a 0.85. And at the 12th fret, a 0.86. Here's a look at our neck profile. So yeah, pretty standard rounded C. All right, we're ready to plug this Strat in and see how it sounds. All right, I'm plugged into my 1965 Fender Bassman and I'm using a Levitate Sonic Cake Reverb Delay Pedal. I'm gonna do some clean and then a little bit of overdrive.
right, yeah, so this thing's playing really great now, and uh, it's got some fantastic clean tones. That humbucker really makes it a lot more versatile. Uh, let's go ahead and try a little bit of overdrive. <laughs> One of my final thoughts on this 2005 Mexican Fender Fat Strat. Well, you know, for $250, I think we did all right. I definitely needed some work. I need to replace the tuners. Actually, only one was broken, but uh, yeah, next to impossible to find just a single for a decent price. So I'm going to include the original tuners with this guitar in case something goes wrong with these locking ones, but they seem solid. And uh, yeah, they fit the holes just perfectly. So this was kind of just a drop in, easy fix. And at least it's nice and smooth. It doesn't look the greatest close up, but if you're on stage, it, it passes for a relic for sure. And uh, I really like the original Midnight Wine color. I think that looks great. Um, I really like Fat Strats because I really like having that humbucker in the bridge position. It just gives you a lot more tonal options. And uh, yeah, after the fret level, and polish this thing really did play great it's got a really nice neck on it really easy to bend and uh, it's got a really nice profile too so it plays really really nice now with very low action and no buzzing or fretting out anywhere and uh, yeah there's no fret sprout on this at all it's nice and smooth and I thought the pickup sounded really nice clean uh, I really enjoyed the clean sounds out of this guitar I had a little bit more trouble finding something I liked uh, with a little bit more overdrive. Sounded like it just got a little bit muddy. Um, I didn't EQ my amp at all though, I just set it flat. So um, it, with a little bit of amp EQing, I'm sure you could dial that in very easily. And uh, yeah, I had an old trim arm I found that fits this thing perfectly. And it came with a hard shell case too, so you know, for $250 you can't go wrong. And uh, if you know how to do a little bit of work on your guitars, you can turn some really nice um, 
guitar finds that do need a little bit of work into something pretty cool um, for cheap. But if you're interested in this one, I will have it for sale on the Reverb. You can check the link uh, in the description for that listing. But other than that, thank you for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and uh, I'm going to have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.